And something you'd be shocked by is that it, it was like, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. I don't even know when exactly it was. You know, these UMPCs, the ultra mini whatever PCs, yeah. there was a UMPC that was an X86 DOS machine from years ago. And you could buy one of these things. And it was the most lean, power consuming, little like sipping of power that you would ever see. Like it was shocking how good it was. You could put it away for months yeah. and pop it out and it would continue to work. It had basically like one of these uh, screens you might see essentially on like a calculator, but it was a full that DOS machine that ran the x86 spec. Now the issue is that all of the different changes to the stack that have been made during that period of time since then have entirely been in such a way that if you look at the, I guess what you might say is uh, the set of trade-offs that were made in order to afford them with a higher level of performance on the desktop and the server have left the chip in such a way that like even for example, you remember what was that Cherry Lake years ago where they tried to do a mobile implementation that they got into the Zen phone it was the Asus Zen phone that was an x86 yeah. Android device. It ran for like an hour or something and then it just died. So whoever it is that was working on that sort of thing at the time, I guess you would say of these DOS UMPCs, they figured yeah. out the power consumption without any issue. But at the end of the day, if you have the ARM instruction set, which is essentially to say it's a risk-based instruction set versus something where you have an Intel chipset where it's CISC-based, yeah. you're going yeah. to inevitably have more operations taking place, which would consume more power. So even if you have precisely the same silicon, even if you have precisely the same process nodes, the risk versus CISC, ARM's going to win. And that means that in a world where everything is a mobile device, you are not going to see success long run from a company whose entire business is predicated on an instruction set, which has essentially survived because of legacy, which is to say that all the yeah. binaries that have been created years ago will only operate on their instruction set because it's not yeah. optimized for consumption of heat. And by the way, RGB that won't heat. change real fast, right? Yeah. It, it, if you go into any business in the world, they're running Microsoft yeah. Windows on an Intel box, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That will not change. So Intel will not disappear quickly. Yeah. You even read my if, article. Even if they, yeah. yeah. You read my article, which is primarily talking, it was like why uh, computers suck, whatever, and like how we're going to learn from this other system. That whole article was basically talking about how the enterprise development model has been so dominant for such a long period of time and why the Windows Intel paradigm has more or less owned the whole ecosystem. And that's yeah. to say that I see in the long run that there's a rising tide of First off, people not caring about backward compatibility, which I think is fantastic, which is to say that we're going to see more innovation in the software space around particularly yeah. operating systems. And then also the other thing being, we're not necessarily going to be entrenched on the x86 instruction set anymore, which will mean we'll necessarily have to break compatibility at least once, which is happening right now while we're transitioning to the M1. And then yeah. the most wonderful thing about this is that when this ISA deprecation happens, which means that all these components that were otherwise entrenched ISA on stands for inter oh it's um instruction set architecture it's uh, just to say x86 or to say arm right so yeah. the idea being that when we transition from arm over excuse me from x86 to arm on the desktop that all the yeah. components of the stack that were otherwise required to run on the x86 platform that would not have been ported to arm that now if you yeah. have a desktop software business you want to continue to sell means that they'll have to invest the energy to getting those components over onto ARM. And then yeah. the major point about this, the thing that will actually, I think, impact things more than ever is to say that when you have a binary or you've produced a code base that you have in, let's say, uh, your like laptop, right? that isn't necessarily now distinct from the code base that you have on a mobile device or on an embedded yeah. processor, which is to say that you are going to see every software ecosystem that would otherwise be, this is mobile, this is desktop. That's all going to be one thing now. And the economic incentive behind that, I think, is sufficient that even if Intel is in a position today where they have this long entrenched legacy oh. of software hardware, that they will not in 20 years have anything nearly as dominant as the empire that they created with the Intel and Windows sort of fusion.